So I'm very excited to show you the new version of GarageBand. Now we're gonna, we're gonna look at two things today. Some great new recording tools and a really fun way to learn the piano and guitar. So let's launch uh, the brand new GarageBand 11 and it starts with a project chooser. We're gonna open up an existing song. Now this brings up the part of the garage, of, of GarageBand that most people are familiar with. This is the canvas where you record and create your songs. Now imagine here that a group of kids have gotten together to jam in their garage and they've recorded this piece. So we've got a few tracks of guitar, we've got some bass and percussion, and everybody recorded along to a drum loop. So we'll play a little bit of it and I think it'll be pretty obvious to all of you that these guys are going to need a little bit of help. Okay, <laughs> kind of a mess, right? Well, the problem here is the rhythm. Everybody's just playing really sloppy. Now, they all recorded to a drum loop, so if I start by just soloing the drums that they, they began working with. Drums are great. The drums are not the problem here. In fact, the drums are the only thing in this entire song that are playing with good rhythm. <laughs> and we can, really, uh, we can really show this off by just bringing in some uh, additional musicians, and you can quickly hear things falling apart. Right, those two guitars, they're all over the place. They're having uh, some, some struggles keeping up with the drums. But the great thing is that the groove matching feature, the new groove matching feature in GarageBand 11, will let us fix all of this with just a single click. So as I hover my mouse over the left side of these tracks, you see the star appears. So I get to pick one track in my song to become the groove track. And of course, we're going to pick the drums here. And uh, look what happens when I click on the drums. GarageBand instantly analyzes the rhythm of those drums, including the human feel. That's a really important part of that performance. And then it applies that groove to every other instrument and every other track in this song. So now when I go back and play this, all the instru instruments are going to be locked together in perfect rhythm, but to a human rhythm, because we don't want our song sounding robotic. So let's listen. much better, right? Really, really cool. So that's groove matching, and it's, it's kind of like an automatic spell checker for bad rhythm. It's really great. <laughs> so groove matching is great for these global timing fixes to your song, but sometimes you want to go in and you, you just want to target one or two notes and get them just the way you want them. And that's a perfect job for the new flex time feature in GarageBand 11. Now, you might remember at the end of the song, all the guitars kind of hit that one big chord and they really let it ring out. Um, I'll play a little bit of that to remind you. All right, so it sounds good, but the problem is that one of the guitars missed that hit. And you can even see it visually, because all these regions have these nice long waveform tails, and then this one comes up a little short. So we can go and solo that track so you can hear it. All right, so he just forgot the hit, played that a little short. Not a problem, because we'll be able to fix that with flex time. All I have to do is double click on the region, and it brings up my audio waveform editor. And the great thing about flex time is that I can click right on the waveform, and now look at this. I can stretch it out to make it longer, I can make it shorter. Flex time makes audio this very fluid, flexible thing, so I can just drag it out as far as I want it, and now it's playing as long as all the other guitars were. So really, really easy way to, you know, ways to fix the timing of your songs. Between groove matching and flex time, musicians are just going to love these new features. But now we're going to go to a completely different part of GarageBand, because GarageBand also has music lessons built right in. You can learn to play piano and guitar directly in GarageBand. And you get there by clicking on Learn to Play. And here you can see all the great lessons that we've built right in. If you've never picked up guitar before in your life, Start out with intro to guitar. We'll tell you everything you need to know to play that first note. But we've also added a bunch of great new lessons as a part of iLife 11, uh, this blues guitar and rock guitar series that are, that are really great. And the same thing with piano. All these wonderful lessons, including this, this classical set that I really love. And uh, we'll play out, uh, let, let's take a look at Mozart's Minuet in F major. 
Now, the amazing thing about this piece is that Mozart wrote this when he was just a kid, and he was learning how to play. So really cool. Now, as you can see in GarageBand, the entire Learn to Play feature is presented in full screen, and it starts with this beautiful HD video at the top, and I'll, I'll play a little bit of the intro for you. Hi, I'm Tim. In this lesson, you'll learn how to play Mozart's Minuet in F major. Right, and I won't go through the whole lesson and play it, but I'll just scrub through and show you that the instructor will give you a step-by-step, note-by-note breakdown of the entire piece, including this animated piano down below that shows you what finger to play and where to put it on the keyboard. And the great thing is that you can learn, th learn this at your own pace with no pressure. Just at your comfort level, go through and learn, uh, learn the piece. Now, when you're ready to play along, you just go to the play chapter, and now we're ready to check out the new How Did I Play feature. Now, I'm a guitar player, so we're going to get a little bit of help on keyboards from Gerhard Lengling, who's our chief software architect for GarageBand. Come on up. Welcome, Gerhard. So right here, we have a, just a standard USB music keyboard that's attached to the Mac, and it plays the built-in grand piano sound that we have. All right? And it's really easy. Once, uh, once I hit record, uh, Gerhard's goal will be to play along with this, uh, with this piece and try to play as accurately as possible and GarageBand will tell us in real time how he's doing. And the other cool thing is that he gets to play along with a real chamber orchestra that we recorded in Vienna. So it's always better to be able to play with real great musicians from day one than a boring metronome. So if you're ready, Garrett, I'm going to hit record and then get out of your way here. Sure. Ready? Okay. Good luck. He says he plays correct. It lights up the notes in green. So he's doing good. Okay, so if you make a mistake, <laughs> it'll highlight it in red for you. And you can see little timing. When your timing is off, it shows you that in yellow. And in the lower left corner, it keeps a running score of how you're doing against the entire project. All right? Okay, so I think you get the idea. We'll stop it there. And the great thing is that, thanks, Gerhard. Great cool. job. <laughs> now, the cool thing is that this timeline shows you exactly how you did. So you can see at a glance that, OK, that's where I rocked it. You know, we played that OK. And then over here, we can click to review the mistakes. And now, Gerhard doesn't make a lot of mistakes in his life, so I apologize to you to make him you know, have to relive this, this painful memory. But uh, <laughs> OK, so there's that note. <laughs> okay. Even better, every time you complete a performance, GarageBand is keeping track of that and building a history. So we can now click on history and see all the times you've been working on this song. Of course, when you start out, you'll probably have you know, some troubles with different sections. And hopefully, over time, you'll be getting better until one day you'll be able to play a perfect 100%. So that's the new How Did I Play feature in GarageBand 11. It works with piano, but it also works great with guitar. And we think musicians are just going to have so much fun with this new release. So thanks a lot, Steve. Back to you.